engines of the Woodhead line will rather busy in summer rush. People were going on holidays, so extra passenger trains were put on. Dave was the busiest engine of them all. That was because he was a yard chump at Chatfield and pulled passenger trains as well. One day, Mr. Salmon came to the yard to talk to Dave. Morning, Dave. Morning, sir. I know you're very busy. I'm trying to find an engine that could free you of your shunting duties here at Sheffield. In the meantime, you'll have to manage on your own. I understand, sir. One afternoon, Dave was bringing in a passenger train from Peniston. Just as he was about to reach Sheffield, Victoria, he was redirected onto another line. Was it by mistake, or did the signalman change the points on purpose? No one knows, but anyway, on with the actual story. Driver, apply the brakes! On it! Dave's driver applied the brakes and the high max started slowing down, but the weight of the coaches was still pushing him down the hill and through an old tunnel. When he came out the other end, he was finally able to stop. Now that was close. Where are we, Dave? I don't know. Looks like a big yard. Does Mr. Salmon know about this? I don't know. I haven't noticed anyone here for about two decades. Well, until now. Oh, where are you? I'm over here. Look. A dog tank? But we're nowhere near the sea. Hello. Oh, <laughs> hi, I'm Dave. And my name's Wilson. So, how do you end up here? Worked the docks at Port Barrack until the war. Then I was sold to a colliery in Rotherham. When that went bust, the manager decided it would be cheaper to dump me here than scrap me. Ooh, that sounds awful. It bloody was. The old engine sounded very bitter. Well... What are you waiting for, lazy bones? You're not going to leave me here to rot, are you? Dave was surprised by his attitude. Uh, why should I take you? Because I said so. And besides, I think your railway could use an engine like me. Okay, okay. Dave's driver decoupled the diesel from the coaches, so he could collect bills from the sliding. The two engines were soon coupled up. Smokebox warning panel. Dave Dan was recoupled to his train and soon the cavalcade set off back onto the main line. A few minutes later, they reached Sheffield Victoria, where Mr. Salmon was already waiting for them. What's this, Dave? You're 20 minutes late, and what are you doing with this old wreck? Cheeky, get! Um, sir, this is Wilson. I was redirected onto an unused line and I arrived in an old yard. There I met this engine and he insisted I bring him with me. Oh, I see. You know, we could do with a bigger yard. That yard was part of the wood headline as far as I know. Which means it belongs to us. You'd find Dave. Looks like the surveyors missed that one. Anyway, who are you supposed to be? My name's Mr. Salmon and I'm the official manager of the wood headline. You know, we could use an extra pair of buffets to shunt trains, here at Sheffield. Told you. Yes, I see. Anyway, Wilson, I'll send you to our works and after you're fixed, you're gonna run the yard. Yes, sir. Dave, please deliver Wilson to the works. On it, sir. Dave did so and Wilson was soon at the works, being checked over by the workman. A few weeks later, Wilson came out of the woods, painted in the LMS black livery. He soon got to work, arranging trains like he was supposed to. One afternoon, he was preparing a goods train when Richard bustled in. Hello, Wilson. What do you want, youngster? 
Oh, uh, nothing. Just looking for some company. Well, I'm busy. On your way. Mr. Great Western, stop following me or I'll report you. Big words for a small engine like you, don't you think? That evening, Wilson had just prepared Nemo's goods train, but was surprised to see that Nemo wasn't ready. He went to the sheds to check if everything was okay. So I said to him like, Oi, no but isn't it? Your train's ready, but I'm not supposed to leave for another ten minutes. Look here, fatso. While you've been chatting away, I've been busting a tube getting your train together. Now if you don't get a move on, I'll drag you out of the bloody shed myself. <laughs> sure, with that wheelbase? Are you mocking my wheelbase? Yes, and what of it? Oh come on then, Green Five. Do your best. Oh, but I wouldn't want to hurt an old-timer. Old-timer? You little... All right, lads, pack it in. Pack it in. I'll be right there, Wilson. You bloody bet, mate. The next morning, Edwin was pulling a goose train. Originally, Nemo was scheduled to take his train, but he was delayed on his previous run. Unfortunately, the train was too heavy for the mixed traffic loco. As he went up the 20 mile long hill, he kept going slower and slower, until he came to a halt. We'll need a banker. I'll inform control. Control, this is engine crew number 45. I have 492. We're stuck between Nepsan and Wesley Bridge. We need a banker. We hear you. We'll send up 7164. That's Wilson. Bother. I'll never hear the end of it. Wilson soon arrived and was coupled up at the back. Are you ready? Ready. The two engines kept buffing forward. Soon, they reached the summit. Edwin was surprised. Wilson was only small, but he worked like an engine three times his size. They kept speeding along and soon they reached Penniston, where they left the train on a siding, turned around and returned to Sheffield. On the way back, Edwin spoke up. Wilson, I'm sorry for what I did yesterday. Well, you may be small, you're a hard worker and an important part of our fleet. Ah, that still doesn't make me feel any younger, you know. Well, age is just a number, 